RCC. Welcome to church today. Welcome if you're here as a guest. It's going to be such a great day with baptisms happening, and I cannot wait. Um, my friend Kalani is here with us this morning to co-lead, and I am so glad she's here. It's going to be such a fun morning. Why don't you go ahead and stand up with us? Let's just pray. God, we love you this morning. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing at RCC. And we just ask for your hand to be on the service today. We thank you for your anointing, Lord. We thank you for the fact that it breaks every heavy yoke this morning, God. And we just turn our attention and our focus on you. And we say that you are the king we want. You are the one that we want to adore this morning. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross that has given us the opportunity to be here together this morning as a church family. We love you, Jesus. Amen.
praise for the spirit of heaviness, the oil of joy for mourning, beauty for ashes. Bless you, Lord. Yeah. 
And all your promises are yes. Come on, sing it one more time. Faithful. Faithful you are. We declare it, God. And faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises. Because all your promises all your promises, all your promises are yes and amen. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we can sing that in a way that might feel trite to some of us. All your promises are yes. All of your promises are amen, which is another way to say, so be it, like let it be. Let it be done. Amen. So God, we hold on to those things that we know are true about you. We hold on to those things that we know that you've spoken through your scriptures, spoken to us and over us. We hold on to them as yes. Uh, so help us to fight and, uh, and stand against the enemy's lies that say no. Help us to stand in the yes. In your name we pray. Amen. Welcome to Baptism Sunday. Just coming out of worship, you know, I can't, my expectations can't be too high. So let me try that again. Welcome to Baptism Sunday. All right, all right. Just going to need somebody to get this table up here for me, and I'll be good to go. Um, I think Tim's got it, Nicole. So I'm going to do, we, we've got quite a few people to baptize today, and I'm excited about that. We've got children, teenager, young adult. I mean, we're going to have some fun. It's going to be a lot of people in the water today. We've got some parents involved, so uh, a lot going on. But before we get into that portion of the service, which in about five minutes, we will make a hard shift and everything else will be about baptism. All of the people that you see on the other side of these partitions, so these two sections, at least these two sections, are family and friends and people who are being baptized that are here to celebrate. So welcome to you. So awesome that you're here. If you're a guest, thank you for being here. Thank you for celebrating with us. And then just a special thank you to Kalani and Gary Webb. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. And ministering and leading us in worship. So just a few announcements and then we'll get into it. Guys, uh, this is open to all men in the church. We have our monthly Men's First Monday uh, tomorrow. Uh, the guy teaching there is really good. Um, but... Uh, it's, um, it's just a time, really, it's, it's more about us connecting so, and talking through things that, are, uh, that matter, that are relevant to men and what we're facing in this day and age. I was pretty blown away last month when I walked in. We had like over 40 guys get up early in the morning and drive over, which I think was, is well worth it. It's an investment once a month to get up earlier than you would, show up with the rest of us, and, um, and say, I value doing life with other guys. I want to be surrounded by... Um, a group of guys that are going to be for me and for what God's doing in my life. So that's tomorrow morning, so I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you guys there. And then the next thing is we have our prayer ministry training, okay? Prayer ministry training. So if you've been around River City, you know that at the end of nearly every service, unless we have something a little different going on, but we'll do some version of this today, uh, we invite anyone that would like to receive prayer to come forward. Now, maybe you say, I've never prayed for someone, I don't know what that's like, I've never been prayed for, but I, I'm feeling this need to pray over people, but I, feel, I don't feel equipped to do that. Well, there's a certain way that we do that here, and there's a few different sides to it. It's um, learning to open yourself up to praying like what the Holy Spirit's leading you to pray, but it's also just like learning how to pray for people in general, and we like to have a consistent way that we do that so that when people come forward, they know that we're going to care for them, it's going to be a safe environment, and that um, they're going to know that uh, we're for them and we're with them. So that's next Sunday, but you need to register for that because we have to plan. We like to feed you lunch if you come to that. Um, you pray for people, we'll feed you. That's how it works, all right? But um, So register, let us know you're coming, and uh, it's, it's like an hour, hour and a half after the service on Sunday. You're going to learn a lot about prayer and a lot about the way we do that, so I want to encourage you to register for that. And then my, my uh, next announcement is, 
Yes, Holy Week, all right? So this is on Church Center. You'll receive some emails about this. I will probably make a video and send it out, but don't let that rob you of responsibility now if you just want to take a picture of that. Um, There's a lot going on. So how many of you were here last year for our Good Friday service? Okay, all right. I know it's like, do you cheer for Good Friday? Like, what do you do? All right. So um, what we did last year for the first time ever is we transformed this room into more of an experiential environment to really prepare our hearts that week. It's called Holy Week in the church tradition leading up to Easter. So we had these really cool, and we're going to do this again this year, stations all over the room that were interactive and participatory with readings connected to them. And some of you came in throughout the week, like during office hours, and participated by yourself. But from Monday through Thursday, so that week leading up to Easter, Monday through Thursday from 9 to 3, we will have the sanctuary transformed. We'll have music playing in here. So if you're able to come over for lunch, or maybe if you have some space in your calendar, in your day, maybe if you want to come over first thing, if you're able to do that, you can walk the sanctuary and pray. We'll have guided prayer stations all over to just really prepare your heart. You know, Easter is such a big celebratory service, and it's, 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 it's great not to just remember Thursday night, oh yeah, Easter tomorrow. It's great to prepare our hearts like during the week and be ready for that. So we want to create a space in here for you to do that. And then Thursday, which is traditionally, maybe you don't know this in the church calendar, called Monday Thursday. And it just means, um, uh, it, it's, 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 for us, it's going to mean a night set aside for contemplation. So this will be an invite. We'll have some staff here. We'll have the building open for you to come in from 6 to 8. And you go, you know what? I wasn't able to make it over here earlier that week, but I'm, I'm free in the evening. So I'd like to come over and just really sit and reflect, listen to some music, pray, maybe write some things down. Last year, we had a big piece of paper. We're going to do this again on the wall. You can go in, write a prayer, write a verse, just any way that you want to interact with God. We really create so many different options for you. So I would encourage you to participate on that. That's in the evening and maybe you can. Now that is going to be a somber contemplative time. So if you do uh, bring children to that evening, it will be on you to make sure that you protect that environment that we're trying to create. And then on Good Friday, we will have two services. We, we had a great time in here last year, but man, it was full because we did one family service. So the only issue that we had is we just noticed it was, at times it was hard to get around. So we're going to do two. The first will be a family service so for you and your children at 630, right? I'm sorry, at five. And then the second one will be uh, geared just more for adults at 630, So you're welcome to come in with the family for the family service. You're welcome to come in for the second one at 630. And then we will have two services on Easter Sunday. Um, I know this is a lot to remember. We're going to send this out to you. Don't forget, I just wanted to put it on your radar. All right. We'll have two services on Easter Sunday right here in this room, 9 a.m. and 1030. So we're excited about all that's going on there. And then last but not least, your lifeline for communication here is the Church Center app. Right? If you don't, I don't have my phone in my pocket, but if you don't have Church Center, I'll give you just a moment now to take your phone out. You can scan that QR code and click the little yellow thing that just pops up, and then you can download it from the App Store. And you'll have Church Center. It's a free app. If you're serving with us, if you're in Planning Center in any other way, your info will just transfer over. It's actually really quick. We do a lot of things through Church Center, a lot of communication through Church Center. So um, hopefully, if you don't have that app, you will get it. And we can go from there. And then uh, my last announcement is, if you're part of the RCC family, you should have received our 2023 annual report. Did you guys get that? Good things, right? Good things? Yeah. So I've already received a lot of communication, some texts, some emails from many of you just thanking us for that. Thanking us for the transparency, but also just giving you an opportunity to go back through the year and celebrate like all that God did. So like today will be a part of next year, you know, 2024's annual report um, as we remind you of how many, how many people we baptized and uh, we get to look back and celebrate that together. So let me uh, pray for us and then I have a verse and a little talk here and a little video and a little song. I'm just kidding. And, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll get into it. 
God, love you. I thank you for this church. I just, right now, begin to pray over these next few moments in the water. I just love, God, uh, the way that you've helped us understand you through water. The beginning of the scriptures, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Uh, The Israelites crossing through the Red Sea, the ark floating on the waters. Jesus going into the water. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you, you have used water to help us understand you. And we just look forward to this declaration of faith that's going to be made by those today. And we pray right now, Lord, that your presence will just settle on this moment. And accomplish your purposes. And we pray against lies. We pray against doubts. We pray against anything that the enemy might be trying to do. In your name we pray. Amen. So I've already had a little chat with the kids around the pool this morning. Some of them that are being baptized about what it, what it means and what it looks like. So I wanted to talk to uh, you adults for a minute. You know, if you, we're in an election year, which is super positive, stoked about that, right? But um, <laughs> if, if you just watch the news, right, if you just read the news, if you just read what's going on with a generation, the way certain students are acting uh, in, on both sides of turmoil on certain college campuses, if you look at the way people have become more divided on certain issues, if you look at the way that people have become so um, angry and hostile toward each other, and then if you look at the big, like the global scape of what's happening all over the world and wars and rumors of wars and all this stuff, it's difficult to process and to say like, God, what are you doing? And, you know, Paul was so clear when he was writing so much of the New Testament to remind us many times that uh, we have to live by faith, not by sight. We have to focus our eyes on what we can't see. In other words, we have to ask God to help us see what he's doing. So I had an opportunity a few weeks ago to drive over to uh, the campus of Florida State University. Any Knowles in the room? Would all of you like to share your opinion about the playoff and how that... Just kidding. All right. People exit the room. All right. Um, So a group of people started praying on the campus students, and a few adults started praying on the campus of Auburn. Any any tigers in the room? All right. Um, And... God began to do something on that campus that led to what was once a small prayer gathering became a, an event, an evangelistic event in which the gospel was proclaimed on the campus. And then there were these spontaneous baptisms upon professions of faith that were happening, and they were just all night baptizing students. So a young adult college student at FSU found out about what happened at Auburn. She observed it online or or something like that. It kind of made the news a little and reached out to this organization that was facilitating it called Unite and said, I'm going to do everything in my power to work with the student ministries here and anything, churches in the area and bring this thing to Florida State. Okay. So um, I went over. And was able to be a part of it with uh, three children of RCC, uh, Sheldon, Levi, and Mary. Uh, and we all participated in this arena at FSU where multiple thousands of college students gathered on a Thursday night and listened to people talk about real things. Not like fluff things, like real things that, that they're dealing with. And then there's this cultural cloud, right, of accusation and judgment and you're so wrong, I hate you, and because of your whatever, I hate you, your beliefs, your, your background, your country of origin it's turning into, I hate you. So that's happening in the landscape. So I witnessed the exact opposite of that 
as all of these students were encouraged to stand up where they were and bravely couple themselves or group themselves into groups of three or four with people they may know or may not know in a room of thousands and start confessing to each other. Anxiety, you know, thoughts, things I'm struggling with, that, and the, you know, all the things I could say right now. And there, I'm, I'm sitting in this room and I'm looking around and there's confession happening. Not attack, right? Not disunity, but just like the whole room's just coming together. So then that turned into someone walking up and saying, maybe what happened at Auburn should happen here. Does anybody want to come forward and profess faith? And just by droves, I and mean, we didn't have enough room for people to come forward and profess faith, which led to us all walking. Did you guys know there's some, there's some legit hills in Tallahassee? <laughs> I was on a hike for a minute. I was kind of going up, you know, going up the hills, and I was like, man, it's a little bit of work to go to school here. A little, like, you're rucking. If you've got a backpack on at Tallahassee, you're putting in some work. So we walked up to one of these fountains that is typically used... If you laugh, I'll know that you've participated in this. <laughs> that is technical. That is, typically, that is typically used for someone turning 21. And um, just like the last story I heard is someone that had like an accident and bumped their head in there like two weeks prior. So it's generally used as like a rite of passage, probably not in the safest way. Let's just put it that way, okay? So now this, this whole pool, this whole fountain was being reclaimed and redeemed as a rite of passage, like crossing over, like Israelites, like going in, not God's people, coming out God's people, right, like on the other side. So I'm in this crowd, and I had Levi with me. If you know Levi Helton, he's about six foot something, four. And Levi, I'm like, Levi, here's my phone, man. Try to get this on video. So this is Levi's um, recording what was happening in the fountain. James, you can work with him a little bit. Oh, no, it's my James and Vigor. All right, so super inside joke, sorry. Um, so they're already scheduled. They're going to be at the University of Alabama uh, for this event, and, and they just announced Georgia. So the southeastern region is seeing a very counter, you know, like this, all the vicious things that are happening uh, culturally right now. Uh, there's also a movement on college campuses that's different and looks different and feels different. And it's the power of confession and repentance. It's bringing things into the light so that the enemy doesn't have uh, power over them anymore. And it's saying, I want to walk different and I'm going to profess it in front of all of these students that I'm, I'm new, okay? So I have one verse. I think it's up on the screen. I don't even know if I have it in my notes, Kevin. Paul writing to the church in Corinth. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself 
through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Is that it? Is that all I gave you? Yeah. This is the grace of God, okay? This is how you, you will have these conversations, parents, with your children again and again. And that they will mess up. They will make mistakes. You will mess up. You will make mistakes. But this is what God was doing. He was reconciling the world to himself by not counting our sins against us. They were counted against Christ. The full number, the full number. I mean, if we tallied all the sins in this room, guys, I mean, you could read, probably read that document. You read, if it was just mine, you could read that document for years and years before it ended. But if we tallied all of our sins and counted them, imagine. So all the sins were counted, not against us, counted against him on that cross, which is why I love this baptismal pool in front of this cross, right? He who knew no sin became sin. So that in him, in him, say, oh, but I, God, I'm a new creation, but I've, 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 I've done all these terrible things since then. But are you in him? Are you in him? Because if you're in him, he who knew no sin became sin so that in him we might receive the righteousness of God. We might receive right standing before God. That's what we're celebrating here today. And then he seals that. The seal of knowing God is not, okay, after you met him, did you keep everything perfectly and obey everything perfectly and do everything perfectly? No, we want to live for him for sure. But we can't even begin to understand what that means unless he fills us with his spirit and brings the inside of us. It's like, one way I like to think of it is like the umbilical cord between God and man was severed, but the spirit turns it back on. Like, relationship to God comes back like the lights are on, like we're alive to him. We were, we were not alive to him, and now we're alive to him. So when these children and teenagers, young adults come out of the water today, think about the fact that they are alive to him. They're in him, right? Okay. I feel like that thunder really added a good effect. <laughs> So we have our um, baptismal uh, candidates, everyone who's going to be baptized is seated in these two sections. So when I call your name, stand up and let's do this. Uh, let's don't clap for everyone as I call their name. At the end, let's celebrate what we're about to do because we're going to clap for them individually big time when they come out of the water, all right? So we'll, we'll hold it. We'll clap for them while they stand. We're going to have them. Uh, parents, if you need to help them for this, I don't, I don't know that we talked about this around the pool, but they're, I'm just going to ask uh, the children, a uh, teenager, young adult, a question about do they profess faith in Jesus Christ, and they've already told you that they do. They've already told us that they do, so they'll just say, I do, all right? All right, so when I call your name, stand. Judah Epperson. Finley Kinnear, Ruby Snow, Peter Day, Ellie Grace Copham, Rhodes Copham, Addie Virachoff, Charlie Rossi, Hannah Anta, and Mason Bridgman. All right. So... I'm going to ask you guys a question, okay? All kids and everybody looking at me, I'm going to ask you a question. And if the answer is yes, you can nod your head. You can say yes. You can say I do. You can say uh, those two things, all right? Started to give you more options, all right? 
Baptism is a sign of the new birth given to us by the Spirit. Going down into the water is a picture of dying to one's old way of life. And coming out of the water is a picture of being raised with Christ to walk in newness of life. So on behalf of the whole church, because we're all here to witness this, I ask you, do you believe and trust in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, three in one persons? If the answer is yes or I do, you can say yes. All right. Do you reject? So there's, there's God and then there's like Satan. God is good and Satan is bad. He's evil, right? Okay. So do you reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Yes. All right. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord with God's people in the church. Yes, 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 all right. Do you profess Jesus Christ? Oh, I'll ask you that one in the pool. All right. So guys, what we're going to do, we're welcoming the kids in right now, which is really exciting, okay? The kids are coming in. We're going to take a short break. We, we do this every week. It's a connect time. I'm going to go change, okay, so I can get in the pool with these guys and gals. And then when we come back in here, um, let me just, let me, let me give you the expectation for what's appropriate, all right? The expectation for what's appropriate is when they go in the water and when they come out, we're going to be banging on the keys. We're going to be making music for heaven because we know that music is being made in heaven. So feel free to clap. Hoot, holler, rejoice, throw your arms up. It's a celebration, okay? So God, we love you. We thank you for these next few moments. We thank you for what's happening here. We thank you for the fruit of your work and your ministry through the home and through kids, uh, our kids' ministry, our youth ministry. Lord, thank you for this fruit that you're bearing through our church. And we are so excited to rejoice and celebrate each and every baptism. In your name we pray, amen. All right, I'll see you guys back in five. Uh, find your seat. We got the kids crew in here. Kids crew, you ready to see some baptisms? Let's go. Let's see. How does this water feel? How does that feel? Is it cold? Is it cold? <laughs> Tell me how this feels. Whew. <laughs> that feel good? All right, if you are getting baptized this morning, I want to invite you guys to go ahead and line up back here, right in front of the cross. You can go ahead and line up. Right. And as we're doing baptisms, if you're on the back wall and you want to stand up and cheer, we just want to invite you to join in this time. This is a celebration. This is a time for RCC to get as loud as RCC can get. Um, we're so excited for those that are getting baptized today. We're so thankful for what God is doing. And, and if you're kind of in the chair section, we just, just maybe don't stand until the very end just so you can respect people's view around you. But this is a time to get loud and excited. All right, guys. So y'all want to practice with me, RCC? All right, we're going to do a practice run. This is someone just coming out of the water. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, you got it. You got it. You get it. All right, all right. This, this, should, is this, gonna get, this will get me good enough. Okay. Rudy, is, are these on right here? Water is very warm. <laughs> it's not? What do you think? What do you think? All right. Okay, the first the first one getting baptized is Judah Epperson.
you're just in agreement with what's happening here, as I say the profession, you can stick your hand forward. So let's make sure it's a big celebration when he comes out, okay? Put your hand as you can. Okay. Judah, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next we have Finley Kinnear. Finley, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah! All right, next it's Ruby Snow. Grace Copham. All right, Ellie Grace, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here we have Rhodes Copham. Rhodes. Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, next we have Addy Virachoff. Oh yeah, I'm getting some tidal waves now. Addy, upon your profession 
profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, next we have Charlie Rossi. We now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, this is Hannah Anta. All right, Hannah's a young adult in our community, so this is exciting. Dad's here watching, so we're going to celebrate Hannah, okay? All right, let's go. Hannah, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is Mason Bridgman. All right. Mason, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's just give God a big shout of praise. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your salvation, Lord. We love you, God. We thank you, Lord. Okay, right now, we are just going to uh, have a time of worship, a worship response song. And if you've just been baptized, you can just stay where you are. And families, if you want to come and give them a hug and just um, surround them, you can. With the rest of the church, we're just going to have a, a time of response for worship. And kids crew, kids crew, you're now dismissed to go back with Amity and Michael, Becca and all, and uh, the Campbells, and go back to your kids crew room. All right, worship team. Take it away.
Okay, everybody. Now we're going to move into a time of confession in the church, kind of rallying around these that have been baptized. And so I want to first start by inviting you, if you've been baptized or if you're in the family of someone who's been baptized, will you guys just spread out around the stage? This is one of the most uh, special parts of this service where we as a church family can come around those that have been baptized to pray over them and bless them. And before we begin praying, uh, Pastor Jared's going to come back up and lead us in this church um, profession of, of faith. All right, this is an important part of the process because, you know, when someone is uh, baptized, uh, they're baptized into a relationship with the Lord, they're baptized into a new life. They're also baptized into a people. They're baptized into a community. And uh, they're, they're professing faith inside of this community, inside of RCC, this expression of the church, because they're saying we're now part of it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to lead you through a affirmation of agreement that we welcome them into our body, but also an affirmation of agreement that we're all in this together, Okay. Some of you will pray for them. Some of you will serve them. Some of you may have them into your homes. Some of you may volunteer in the ministry that they're a part of. Some of you may be a part of their life in different ways, but you're agreeing to be a part of this, a part of what's happening. So let's read through this together. You have witnessed this covenantal sign and seal of the righteousness that comes through faith. This confession of faith has been given in the presence of many witnesses. We are under an obligation to help them grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, for together we are all the body of Christ. So this is me to you, church. Do you pledge to do everything in your power to pray for them, to rejoice with them, to weep with them, and to walk with them in our journey in God's kingdom together. Congregation say? Amen. All right. So candidates, all of you who are baptized, God has received you by baptism into his church. So all the kids, I want you to look at me now. Where are the kids? Where are the kids? All right. I know that our, some of our older group might understand this a little bit easier than you, so I want you to hear me say it to you. Being baptized actually means that you're officially a part of the church and that you're a part of God's eternal family. Like you're professing faith that I'm gonna be a part of God's family forever. Like not just come here, not just show up on Sundays, but I'm a part of his family forever. I'm new, I'm a part of his new creation, his church. So welcome, all right? Congregation, what do we say? We welcome you into the Lord's family. All right, amen. So here's what we're gonna do next. These guys and gals are gonna stand down here with their family, and as a way to welcome them, one of the first things that you can do is walk around, especially if you know someone, Walk around and pray for them. So you go, well, I'm not sure what to pray for them. Maybe I don't know them. You can say, I bless them in Jesus' name. So I thank you that you've brought them to an understanding of who you are. You can pray for their life. You know, when we talk about what God's doing here, we talk about everything he has for us. So we're baptism, this is a beginning of a life with Christ. So we're claiming their future, all right? We're claiming their future in Jesus' name. The enemy has an alternative plan. We're making an agreement with God's plan for their life. The fullness of what God has for you, okay? The fullness of everything that God has for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so we're gonna create some space here for about 10 or 15 minutes. Please move around, pray, and bless them.
just a few more minutes as some of you are still praying. Okay, if you're still finishing prayer, that's okay. But I'd like to invite everybody that's left to stand with me. Stand up. I want to seal this moment in with a benediction, okay? You can raise your hand if you receive it, especially on behalf of your family or friends or those who are baptized. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. And everyone say, amen.